Folks, welcome to the Revelation Gospel Ministries. My name is Minister Mason Weaver. We meet here in, in uh, Port Charlotte, Florida every Sunday. Whether you like it or not, we get things right. Uh, I have a question for my church here. Uh, you know, God puts out all kind of little puzzles and, and, and things. He, he always cleans up every loose end. He cleans up every loose ends. Anybody know who the two prophets are? That, no, two witnesses at the end times. Two witnesses. We're going to talk about those two guys today because the two witnesses is very intriguing. I wanted to, 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 to prepare you for this because we're going to start doing more and more discussion of the last days because when the rapture happens, this world is going to rejoice. They're not going to be panic because most churches don't teach about the rapture. So the folks going to think nothing happened except another COVID hit. That's what I'm going to say. But in Revelation 11, Verse 3, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sacks cloth. It gives you the amount of days these prophets are going to come. These two men come from heaven alive. They're not angels. They're not spirits. They're living human beings that have not died yet. Because it's, it's giving once the man to die. They've already died. They, 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 they're going to have to die twice. Uh, so we're going to discuss this. I want you to understand at the end of this discussion, I'm going to give a test. No, I'm not. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> no test. I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,203 score days clothed in clack. So I'm doing this the last three and a half years of this human existence. The last three and a half years of this, he, God's going to give us two witnesses to give us one more chance to recognize what he is doing. He's going to be in charge. We're going to think all hell is broken loose, but actually all God is broken loose. There are going to be two men. That, they're, not, they're, they're living men. Some Bible said that they're covenants, they're, they're depositions. These are two men that are alive in heaven. Can you imagine being alive in heaven? with the spirits, they're alive. And we're going to discuss today and maybe try to figure out who they are. It doesn't tell you who they are, but there are hints in the Bible who these two men are. First, we've got to recognize, folks, there are two men. They are alive. They, they were taken from earth. They were taken from earth alive. And they're going to come back alive. And that's going to be very interesting to see. Of course, we're going to see them before they come back down. They were already in heaven when Zechariah prophesied about 500 B.C., and, and and that means that they were not somebody who came after Zechariah. People trying to say it's so and so and so and so and all this. The people that died, Zechariah, when he prophesied this, they were already in heaven. John saw them in heaven about fifth about fifty years after Jesus died. So John, it couldn't happen after John. It had to happen before John. Uh, they were and so what's going to happen? These guys going to come in and they're going to terrorize the ungodly. They're going, to, they're going to show wonders and miracles, giving mankind one more chance to realize there's a real God involved in this, not satanic, not in, not in charge. They're going to walk this earth for three and a half years and do miracles. And if anybody attack them, they open their mouths up and the fire comes out and destroys them. And seeing in this covenant, and everything we see is covering it, these guys are going to be in Jerusalem. They call it Sodom, New Sodom. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on in Jerusalem. And for three and a half years, he's tormenting these ungodly people for three and a half years. And then the Bible says that it's appointed once for man to die. And they were sent to heaven alive. They must return to die. They have to come back and die. Because if Jesus had to die, they got to die. There's no way. you go. They got to heaven on a free pass. I can't imagine how it would be in heaven. Do they have to eat? I mean, do they get married? They're in heaven with spirits. And spirits don't have none of these. Spirits have no heart. They have no intestines. These guys have to eat for thousands of years. These two men have been before God. He sends them down here with power. Change the weather. He, they stop the rain from coming. They can control the weather. They're tormenting these, these liberal Democrats. They're tormenting them where they stay. They can't do nothing against them. And finally, God allows the Antichrist to kill them. Because they got to die. Every human has to die. So he kills them, it was, and, and they remain dead 
for three and a half days. They're here three and a half years. They remain dead. They lay in the streets. And the news, news covers them. They, they, were, they were not going to be buried. And, and the world celebrated. They start giving gifts to each other, celebrating these two guys dying. They spent three and a half years showing who God was, showing who God was, demonstrating who God was. They couldn't harm him. They couldn't touch him. And Antichrist kills him. Now he's the big hero again. And they watched these guys for three and a half days laying in the streets. And then they get up. They get up and dust off. <laughs> After three and a half years, they know they were dead. Three and a half days, they know they were dead. They stood up. And the whole world sees them. The earth will rejoice to their death because they're tormenting the sinners like Trump is tormenting the sinners. If Trump died today, they will all celebrate. They will be in the streets clapping and singing because he's tormenting them. That's what's happening right now, folks. The earth will rejoice at their death because he tormented them. And in Revelation 11, verse 9 to 13, and they of the people and hundred and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. <laughs> and they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them, make merry, and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. They were glad they're going to celebrate their dying. And then verse 11, after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon those who saw him. You think? You think? I mean, CNN probably had the cameras locked on that little spot. There. See they dead, see they dead, see they dead, see they dead. Dead nights. Uh, uh, probably commentary from all the experts. Yeah, they, they lived a hard life, now they died. Yeah. Until they got up. Can you imagine now? They got up and showed themselves to the people. And they, and they found a great voice in heaven saying to them, come up here. Come on. You're dead now. He rose again. Come up here. I took him away. And the people left here had to start wondering because they prophesied something was coming after them. They prophesied. They heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and the enemies beheld them. It wasn't hidden. It wasn't, it wasn't hiding from them. He did it publicly. He laid their bodies on the street and let them lay there for three and a half days so everybody could see they're dead. And rose they, they up off the, out, out the streets and then they went up in heaven. The same hour, the same hour, this happened now. Three and a half years, God gave them a warning. Three and a half years, he tried to prepare them. Three and a half years, he showed them his majesty, his power, his strength. But three and a half years, he kept them from making their money, doing their contest. They couldn't vote for God. They can't, they can't rig the election. They had to deal with these two, these three, these two guys. And every time they criticized them, they would die. Open his mouth up and fire come out. So they're now terrified. So now they're gone. In the same hour after they leave, a great earthquake in the tenth part of the city, Jerusalem, and in the earthquake were slain. It tells you how many were slain. God is persistent. He, he gets down to the narrow stuff. You can understand. 7,000 men died at the earthquake, an hour after they left the planet. And they, seen every, they will be seen dead by everyone while they laid in the streets. And their resurrection will be public. Their resurrection is going to be public. You're going to see it all over the world. And they, those that dwell on the earth shall rejoice. And they send gifts. It's like a, another Christmas. They're going to probably do Hallmark cards. It's going to be, it's going to be great. The torment is gone. The torment is gone. So he takes them away. And they dwell upon the earth for those days. And... We said it was appointed once for man to die. They didn't die. They came back and died. So my question is, if these guys went to heaven alive, what is the rapture? If the rapture is the same, then we got to die too? We got to come back and die? So what is the rapture? The, the, when they, we were taken up, do our bodies go up? Or do we leave our, our bodies down here? If, if he's going to leave our bodies down here, who buries them? If they're still alive, they got to come back and die again. So, seems to me they, they must have died at the rapture. I don't know. I haven't done my research yet. So maybe some of you scholars you can tell me. But I, I see some thinking over here in the corner. Maybe somebody can tell me. I don't know. I see, some, see, I see all the, the brains going here. That's what I want. I always got to think. 
the rapture is going to happen and the world is going to rejoice like they did the two, the two men, two witnesses. They're going to rejoice because they're evil. They're giving their heart up to an evil spirit. They want destruction. They want control. They don't want God to win. They want Satan to win. They worship Satan. You see, have you seen a Super Bowl game? Gee, satanic stuff everywhere. As soon as you pulled your picture on the, on the, on the, uh, the, 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 the place that the singer was, I mentioned her name, <laughs> soon they saw that camera on, they started throwing up gang, not gang signs, these are satanic signs in, in the quarters. You have, you have satanic signs in the White House Christmas decorations. Folks, they, they know who Satan is and they worship Satan. And we're interfering. We're the, we're the restraining force. We're the restraining force. Us meeting and preaching and praying is restraining them from getting what they wanted. They want the promise Satan made Jesus. They want the promise Satan made Jesus. Jesus was taken by Satan after those 40 days in the wilderness. He was weak. He was tired. He was hungry. Weak in the body. And Satan took him there. He gets you when you're weak. He gets you at your weakness. And he took him to a, a mountaintop and showed him all the luxury of the world. And said, this is mine. It was given to me, and I can give it to whoever I wish. If you just worship me a little bit, I'll make you rich. what he's saying, I'll make you rich. And these rap stars, these singers, the entertainers, people in Hollywood, they have given up to that same promise. He'll make them rich. They are rich as they want to be. They got their private planes, and they their great money. Open, they got all kind of money. Bless her heart. It will not keep her out of hell. It will not keep her from suffering. So, so mankind now has been tormented by these three, three, two witnesses, and they, they want to keep their money coming in. When they leave, they're going to be rejoicing. But what we, what we have to do while we're here is make sure that we are the witnesses here. We have to witness of this. I, I, I stop debating with these Lou left liberal Democrats. I stop <coughs> doing it because they know what they're doing. They're not being misled. They're not being deceived by Satan. They're joining Satan. And they've shown us repeatedly, they're showing us they're capable of doing whatever you can imagine. You cannot imagine what they're willing to do if God allowed them to do it. So let's, this election cycle, we better be praying to God and acknowledging ourselves and obeying God by opening our mouths up and telling them what's happening. You see, I think the, the question is, who are these two men? Anybody got any clue what they are? Don't say it. I'll say it for you. I think I know who they are. This is the first book of Grandpa. I tell my grandkids all the time. This is the first. It's not me. It's not the Bible. It's me. I believe it's pretty clear who these two guys are. You go back into history, only two men went to heaven without dying. One was Enoch. In uh, Hebrews 11, 5, he said, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him. And before this transition, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch went to heaven without dying. He was given once the man to die, he got to come back and die. To me, he has to come back to die. It has to be him. And Elijah, Malachi, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 to 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the come of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That is the end times. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The two witnesses came to keep God from destroying us. He gave us one more chance. He gave him three and a half years to convince us that who he is is true. And he sent back to earth those two guys who had not died yet. Can you imagine spending thousands of years in heaven alive? What do you see? What do you know? First of all, you're not afraid to die. You're not afraid to die. So I believe that it's Enoch and Elijah, that God's going to send back. That's just me. So I don't want none of you pastoral PhDs to, to, to write me and tell me I'm wrong. You can tell me what you think, but I'm not going to hear you tell me I'm wrong or not. I don't really care what you think. So if that's the case, if these two prophets came and prophesied for man, will, will God send us something in this world? I think he has. I'm going to upset a whole lot of people. To me, there is no way Donald Trump could be doing what he's doing if not God be sending him. There is no way he could survive all this. The power of the United States of America, the entire government agencies for eight, six years have been against him. The world leaders have been against him. They have not wavered him. His, his curse is still high. That means that 
that he's not God. He's not to be worshipped, but he is obviously protected and sent by God. He has a message. God's protected him all of his life and put him in a position. So, therefore, Christian people need to stop debating whether Trump's a good guy, bad guy, he's rude or not, all that nonsense. I'm rude. I'm still a good guy. I'm very rude. I'm very rude. I, I just have, God got still, is still working on me. I'm, I'm a work in progress. He's still, he's still working on me, but I'm, I'm very defensive of what's mine. I'm very protective of what I'm supposed to be protective of. So people consider me rude sometimes. But Trump has been led by the Spirit of God. This man still has pastors around here and praying and touching him, holding hands and putting hands on him. That means that we have to recognize that God is sending this guy and we have to support God's prophet. We have to support God's ministry. We have to support what he's doing. And that's why the country is, is divided. It's good versus evil. Same day it was in the slavery days. Good versus evil. It took men to stand up against slavery on a moral issue. It took men to stand up against the civil rights movement. The Democrats were in power discriminating, raping, breeding black people. It took, it took a power greater than ourselves to correct this. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to, the, to the Caribbeans for a couple of days. I don't know when. Go to the Caribbeans. You know, the Caribbeans are full of black folks, right? You ever go there? You ever been to Jamaica and Bahamas? I know you have. You've never something in Florida. I haven't been there. <coughs> yeah. They're, they're full of black people. Were those black folks there when Christopher Columbus came? No. Nope. How'd they get there? Slave trade. Yes, sir. The slave trade, the slave traders came in and they thought it was profitable to bring slaves into America in the 1400s. And, but the slaves were, were contentious and rebellious and fighting back and so the Catholic Church had a brilliant idea. They noticed that the, the few slaves in the Caribbeans, uh, you know, you, at first they had Indians. They tried to build the Indians in the Caribbeans, the Seminoles that are here. And they, were, they knew the land. They had relatives over the hill. They, 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 can get, they caused trouble. So the, the Catholic Church decided you know, it'd be easy for both parties because those few Africans you got there, they could deal with the heat like the Indians can. Uh, but they don't know anybody. They can't get away. They don't know the territory. So let's just spare the Indians and just get the more African slaves in, and the Indians will be okay. So the, this was, did that to Spain. And they killed the Indians. And they killed the Indians. <laughs> that's, why, that's, why, that's why you don't have Indians in. You got Seminoles here, but the casinos, they ain't got none in the Bahamas. <laughs> you don't have any in Jamaica. You can't find none over there because they killed them to make room for the slaves. So when the slaves came in, they took up everything in Haiti. You had all these slaves in Haiti, and the French were just treating me any way I wanted to treat them. <coughs> and the French Revolution was going on in France at the time, and the slaves are, they had to learn French to get the orders from the master. So they, 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 know, they know French now, and they're hearing the slave master discuss with his friends with cigars on the front porch about the doggone revolution. We need freedom. Mankind's supposed to be free. And they're hearing this freedom stuff. And they started saying, well, let me see this Bible thing they're talking about. And they get the Bible out, started reading the Bibles. And every, I mean, every, every slave rebellion was led by the pastor. Every. Because the only place you can meet as a slave without master being there was at church. Sunday morning. Uh, also, Saturday night at the barn. The barn the same place. So these, these, the preachers are sort of seeing these things. And you have these early slave rebellions, Jim Mark Vesey and Mark. These guys are all ministers because they read where mankind's supposed to be free. So in, in Haiti, these French slaves were hearing about, about this freedom they're fighting for in France. And my hero, Toussaint Louverture, father was an African chief, and he was a well respected slave on the plantation. And they told him they were going to rebel. They wanted to lead the rebellion. And him, another guy, led a rebellion, these black slaves, because God said, you're not supposed to be a slave. God said, you're free. God said, so they believed God and took on the biggest, baddest army in the world, France. And they started a rebellion on one day. They burned down crops, burned down farms, burned down white folks. They burned everything that they can burn down and had them scared. And Napoleon sent his greatest general. Now he's fighting England. He sent his greatest general and 20,000 troops. Which means his, also his navy to get him there, right? So he took his navy ships 
and took 20,000 of his best troop, his best general, his brother-in-law, General Leclerc, to go into Haiti to put down that little rebellion. And those slaves stood on the mountaintop. I stood there and watched Port-au-Prince. I stood there and watched the sight at the sea. When they came in, saw these, these, these French Navy ships pull in. And all they had was hatchets and spears and bows and arrows. But they also had the hills. And a few years later, now this, the rebellion is going on now because of slave trade. Thomas Jefferson and James Madison go to Haiti to buy the city of New Orleans because they want to have a port in the, in the, in the Gulf. And they go to Napoleon to buy the city of New Orleans. And Napoleon tells them something. I'm tired of these radical slaves chewing up my army, fighting behind trees. I give you the entire Louisiana, I give you the entire territory for 15 million. And our schools tell us that Jefferson and Monroe was the great negotiators. No, it was too solid overture, that black dude in Haiti <laughs> that disturbed the, the crop so much with the cotton, burning down their, 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 their uh, coffee plantations, burn them down. He had on the trade. And so what happened, Haiti became the only slave state that I can, unless that, that, that thing with the um, gladiator was true, the only slave state that the slaves overthrew the nation. And they came out of slavery praising God. That was the, the courage to go to, to, to the fight. The witnesses of the Bible gave them courage to take on the greatest army. And when they defeated Napoleon, they had to then fight, first they had to fight the French. I mean, the, uh, the Spanish. Then they defeated Napoleon, and then they defeat Great Britain and sued for peace. God led them the entire way. America, we're, we're, we're slaves now, white and black folks. We're slaves in this tyrannical government right now. <coughs> they have proven that they are willing to do anything to you. They're willing to beat you, cheat you, and kill you. And if this is depressed, you're going to be depressed. And the only power that's going to take back this nation is if we act like we believe God. If we act like we believe God Almighty and study the scripture and see what God wants us to do, he will lead our nation. Those two witnesses came here and gave these clowns eyewitness testimony of who God was. They spent thousands of years with God in heaven, folks. Their testimony was serious. They spent thousands, they, they, didn't have, they couldn't produce their mama. They appeared, they came back from heaven. They talked about heaven. They proclaimed what God was saying to them with miracles with miracles and power, and the world still was so blind it could not see it. If they could not see that, they're not going to see you either. They're not going to see your testimony. They're not gonna, you can show them the truth right in front of them. You can point out the truth. They still won't get it. They're blind, spiritually blinded. So when the rapture happens, they're going to celebrate. They're going to say, the tormentors are gone. Those Christians are gone now. And they're going to celebrate, folks, until we return. So let's not worry about what we're telling them. Let's worry about what we're telling God. This is our last chance. This is our last election. If we lose this, they're going to replace two or three Supreme Court justices, and you will never have freedom again. Our only hope now is the Supreme Court. And that's why God allowed these three openings under Trump to happen, to set these guys right there. We have one way out. It's them. You have, uh, you have DAs disobeying the Supreme Court right now disobeying the Supreme Court. Tell them, no, don't do it. They're doing it anyway because there is no recourse. The FBI will not knock on the judge's door. And they know that. So they don't care right now. And if we allow them to take power, they'd be a mute court. We better be on our knees praying every day. The whole nation better be the internet. You better be on, on your knees praying for God and acknowledging your belief in God, acknowledging your faith in God, acknowledging your ability and willingness to obey God in spite of mankind. You have to be ready to embarrass your mama, embarrass your daddy, make anything on your church, get fired from your job. You better be willing to do that because that's what, that's what it's going to take. We can save our nation. We can't do it politically. We got to do it spiritually. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of hope and prosperity it is a message of hate. We understand that you are our God and we are required to proclaim you to the world, rich or poor, Right or wrong, we're, we're told to proclaim you. The gospel is what you have done for us. Give us the strength, give us the power, give us the wisdom, and we will give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, we, we thank you, God. Amen.